Romans chapter 10, verse 5 through 10. <clears throat> For Moses writes about the righteousness that is by the law. The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, and thus has righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses, thus has salvation. In verse 11, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Get Jesus. The beginning of chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, talks about having an excitement or enthusiasm for Christ, having a zeal for God. But it's really no good if it's not focused on the truth of Christ and what He has done to bring salvation. To you and I. All too often people try to live a life obtaining righteousness on their own. By this I mean their thinking is if I live good enough, if I live correct according to the Bible, then I can go ahead with my life the way I want. As long as I live in a manner that is good. That is right in the eyes of the Lord of the world. But it does not change your heart. It doesn't change the intent of your heart. If you have a zeal for God, but it's not based on truth. You don't follow the word of God. And don't allow it to change your heart. You can live as good as you want. You can do all the good things you want. It's no good. In verse 5, for Moses writes about the righteousness that is by the law. The one who does these things will live by them. What does he mean by that? The law can only reveal to you that there is sin in your life. The law does not change the heart. It only changes your lifestyle. When you live according to the law, according to the scriptures, and your change, heart doesn't change, it just changes your lifestyle. It doesn't change you. <clears throat> Follow the Bible, or at least parts of it, makes it easier to love your neighbor as yourself. The Jews were given to were given the ceremonial laws. When you study the Old Testament laws, when they were given, especially in Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, you will find that there was a practical reason for some of those laws and their ceremonies. There were health issues as they wandered around in the wilderness that God said, you need to do this, this, and this to maintain your health. 
That was a physical thing. But what else did the law do? The formalities, the ceremonies. It focused their minds on God. And the things that He was doing for them. They were also told to love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Even back then, when the Jews left Egypt, God wanted their hearts and minds. It wasn't just about the physical laws, or following the physical laws and ceremonies, and doing the physical things. He also wanted their hearts and minds. He wanted their physical worship. That's what the ceremonies were all about, the sacrifices and things like that. They were the physical worshiping of God. Just as we gather together here Sunday mornings. As a congregation. We are physically here. Praising and worshiping God. Last week I said you can be here every Sunday. Do everything just right. But if your mind's thinking about that person sitting in front of you. About how funny they look. I'll leave that alone. <laughs> But if we're thinking about how funny someone looks in front of you, your mind isn't on God. Yes, you're physically here. But their physical worship is not going to do you any good if it doesn't change your mind, if your mind isn't to God. And just as today, we are told today, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In Galatians 5, verse 22 and 3. What's the last phrase? Against such there is no law. Why is there not a law on these things? They're nothing physical. It's all in the mind and the heart. You can't create a law from, for moral, for good morals. They're trying to morat, make good morat, make the immoral things good morat, morality. I'm not saying it right. They're trying to pass laws to make the immoral moral. And that, that, that can't happen. These things are emotional. Of the mind. And you cannot regulate someone's thinking. Or how they feel. Just as loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Go a long way in helping one to love their neighbor. So do the fruits of the Spirit. We can make laws, and they have been made, against murder, stealing, adultery, physical abuse, slander. These are things that everyone does that are physical. So you can pass a law and control someone's physical being, their physical actions. You can make it illegal for me to go out here and hang somebody up in a tree. But you can't make it illegal for me to think, I wish that person would just go and die. Yes, it'd be immoral. If we really wish somebody would die. What did Jesus say about adultery? You committed it in your heart, and it was the same as if you did it. Exactly. When you think about it in your mind, and have you done it, it's the same as, it, as you have actually done it. Even though 
Eunice and I have been married for a number of years. I cannot force her to love me, to have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control. She has to decide to do those things on her own. I can't force her to. I can say things and do things to try to help her along. If she gets a frown, I say, turn that thing upside down. And depending on what I say or do, it helps in her loving me, her joy. <clears throat> depending on what I don't do, it affects her joy or the lack thereof. I must confess, the other day, on Thursday, was her anniversary. And guess what Mark did? He had to go to work because he forgot to say, I want that day off. I did try to wiggle things around, make him change the loads, but there was one that I just couldn't get away from. I went early, got home early, and it was okay. We got through with it. I looked her nicely in the eyes and said, I love you. All these things. She, she got a grin on her face. It was all good. Yeah, but tell them what day you think is more important than that. That's what we also discussed. Is that you were No. Actually, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. I guess you could say I was disappointed that one day that she didn't go honey. I'm glad I didn't go on that but day. I was so, I am so blessed because God gave her back to me the day she had her aneurysm. And I think that's the more important day of the day of her marriage. So much more than her wedding day. Because God created a miracle for both of us. And now she's still here. And aggravating me. But that's all right. That's my lot in life. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of back off now because you have someone sitting behind who's doing very well at that time. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this. In order to have the fruits of the Spirit, we must turn to God the Father and have Him put them into our minds, our inner self, into our soul. We can't have these truly without having Jesus Christ. We can follow the Ten Commandments and, have a, and live a life that looks very well, that looks very good to others. But if our hearts are not filled with the Holy Spirit, we will not make it into the presence of Jesus Christ to walk those golden streets. The righteousness that is by the law. The one who do these things, the ones who do these things will live by them. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you live by the law, law of righteousness, you will do the things that you need to do to live a life of righteousness. It, this really doesn't have anything to do with the heart. <clears throat> oh, you may have, for the most part, have good things in your heart. But God won't really be there. 
It's kind of like the phrase, it's nice, it's a nice house, but nobody's home. The law reveals to us our sin, or the sin in our lives. The law shows us that there is a need for us to change our ways. To change our way of life. Because of that sin. When we follow the law, then we are right with the law. We are in the right place with the law. The law of righteousness. We will be living by the law, but it does not give us salvation. The law affects our physical lives. Doing all the right things by the word of God will not get you into heaven. Jesus says he came to fulfill the law. What does that really mean? That he fulfilled the law. Would living by the law fulfill it? Yes. If you live by the law, it would fulfill what the law meant to do. You would do as the law says. The Israelites lived under the law. They lived according to it. From the time it was given to them, coming out of Egypt, to the time that Jesus walked on this earth. They lived according to the law, then things changed. From Egypt to the crucifixion, the law through sacrifices was the way to redemption of sins. At the time the curtain was torn from top to bottom, there was a new way to redemption, and that was through Jesus Christ. And it was all open to all who believed. For Christ said in the end of the law for the, with the result that there is righteous for everyone who believes in Romans 10, 4. The end of the physical law abiding to the beginning of, of by faith from the heart. This is what God was working towards from the beginning. When you sit down and study the Old Testament, God's grace in the picture at all. Even though they had the ceremonial law, Moses, the law of Moses. Was God's grace there? I see some trials, I see some, yeah. Somebody's been studying the Old Testament. There are a number of times that God's anger towards the Jews was such that he told Moses, step aside, because I'm going to annihilate these people. I'm going to get rid of them. I'm tired of them. But Moses says, don't do that. You don't want to do that. What are the Gentiles going to think of a God that brings his chosen people out of the wilderness and then annihilates them? Moses pleaded for them. But what was it that caused God to change his mind? Grace. This thing of being in the right relationship with God was to be by faith, not through works. Abraham's righteousness was attributed to what? His faith. His, his faith. It wasn't through the ceremonial law. It wasn't through God's law. It was by faith that Abraham was declared righteous. The righteousness 
that it by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ from the dead. What does that verse really mean? I studied most of the week on that verse. And lo and behold, this morning it, it hit. Quotes from the Old Testament. Here's what it's, what it's said in this, in this scripture. They are quotes from the Old Testament. With a little change. Here it's talking about Christ. Not the law of Moses. In the Old Testament it's talking about the law of Moses. But it's still the same principle. It's not hard to grasp hold of Jesus or the law. We don't have to go somewhere. We don't have to leave this place to go find Jesus. We don't have to work for it because it's in you. Your mouth and your soul and your heart. Your mind. Deuteronomy 30 verses 11 through 14. This commandment I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it too remote. It is not in heaven, as though one must say, who will go to heaven to get it for us and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. And it is not across the sea, as though one must say, who will cross over the other side of the sea to get it for us and proclaim it to us so that we may obey? For the thing is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your mind so that you can do it. We don't have to go nowhere. It is right close. So how do we obtain it so that we can obey it? This scripture in Deuteronomy goes on to say that there is a choice to be made. Life and good or death and evil. Even back then, at the outset of the law, when the law was given, there was a choice to be made. You had to decide whether you want to follow it or not. It wasn't forced on anyone. You didn't need to go through some difficult process to obtain the grace of God. It was right there in your inner being. Available. Same as salvation in Jesus Christ is today. We don't need to go to heaven to find Jesus. As though He never came to live on earth. We don't need to go to the grave to find Jesus. As though He was never resurrected to the newness of life. He walked this earth. He went to the grave. He rose from the grave and lives forevermore. He's available right here, right now. The message of God's grace is as close to you as your tongue and your heart. Faith. That's all you need. Faith. Rather simple, isn't it? The message of God.
God's grace is through faith. It is through faith that one confesses Jesus as Lord, and in the heart one believes that Jesus is Lord. In verse 10, for, for with the heart one believes and thus has righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses and thus has salvation. When Jesus asked the disciples, what do the people say? Who do the people say I am? They had a whole list of things. Then Jesus says, what do you say? Who do you say I am? What was Peter's response? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What was Jesus' response to Peter? This wasn't told to you by your flesh. This wasn't revealed to you by your own self. Who was it that revealed it to him? God the Father, the Holy Spirit. How far do we have to go to find Jesus Christ? To be righteous in God. To be in the right way with God. You are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. It is by the Holy Spirit that it is revealed who Jesus is. It is then that one can't help but proclaim to the world that Jesus is Lord. When you have filled with the Holy Spirit, it's got to come out somewhere. The joy of the Lord has to come out somewhere. It's going to spill out. You'll confess that Jesus is Lord. These things, spirit, the, the things of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, joy, peace, love, all that things, those are going to come spilling out because you have the Holy Spirit. Because you believe, you have faith that Jesus is Lord. We do not need to go find Jesus and His love. It is being handed to us. God is waiting for us to respond to His call. We must decide. It's up to us to make a choice. It's up to us to respond to God's calling. God's waiting. All day long I held out my hand to this disobedient and stubborn people. We're no different today than what the Israelites were a thousand years ago. God is still holding out His hand, waiting for those who will. To come. Do we need to go and get Jesus? No. All we need to do is open our hearts. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Pretty simple, huh? Why do we make it so difficult? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. These words that you have written in this book, they're here for our, for our good. They're good for 
Discipline, guidance, comfort. All we need to do, Heavenly Father, is pick them up and read them and take them to heart. Help us, Heavenly Father, to read your word, to read it daily, and to ponder them, to meditate on your word. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach us what it is you want us to know and how you want us to live in a right relationship with you. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.